and its lust at first sight. Oh, yes. Jan, I could just swallow you whole. Oh, yes, Frankie Beverly. Oh, you look good. You look like a lickum stick. already done so please remember to like share and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube and if you are not a part of our book club please hit the patreon link below and for a monthly five dollar donation you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it if YouTube gets it. Now, right quick, let me say this to my book club members. Listen, we're only halfway through, okay? But you know I like to be thinking in advance, you know. That's just how I am. As soon as I get the syllabus, I'm already working on the paper. But um, I was saying that I don't want to do just old school, even though I love old school because I am tempted to do that Temptations book by Otis Williams, because it was just released sometime this month. But I'm also tempted to do that Lily from SWV. I really want to do a R&B group. You know, if you guys have any suggestions, please go over there and uh, let me know on the Patreon. But um, you know how people are, if they not dead, or if they ain't kicked the bucket or went through some kind of, um, you know, addiction, they don't want to tell you the truth. They want to keep their reputation spotless. I don't like that shit. You know, I need you to tell me that you is fucked up just like me, okay? And you know that damn Lily from SWV is ratchet, okay? You know them ratchet girls, they tell all their business for nothing. So that's why I'm inclined to do the SWV book, okay? But y'all tell me what y'all think over there on uh, Patreon. Now, let's talk about Jan Gay's After the Dance my Life with Taco Meat Marvin, Part 9. So where we left off in Part 8, Marvie Pooh was looking at her face going, I need to birth these songs that wasn't working. Okay, just like you need to birth my son. Now, Jan, she back on the stress because she is like, this nigga stay asking me for a son. A month before the baby was born, Marvin Gaye was asked by the United Nations to spearhead a campaign to help the poor of Africa. Okay, they thought of him or the United Nations thought of him as a humanitarian and an excellent representative for the cause. Okay, when Jan found out what he actually was doing, she thought that it was a honorable thing to be, um, you know, doing a, uh, such a great thing for the people of Africa. Marvin Gaye was like, I'm not good enough. Jan was like, what you talking about? I'm not good enough. I'm old, dirty dick motherfucker. Well, we know that too, but that don't mean that you're not the person that has enough power to spearhead the campaign to help the people of Africa. In his mind, he think he is uh, not worthy or unworthy, okay? Well, he must be going through his moments. I don't know, but you know that nigga is, I don't know. I don't know what the hell he is. I ain't no doctor, and I ain't trying to uh, diagnose him. So anyway, November 16th, 1975, Frankie Christian Gay is born. Frankie is Marvin's brother's first name. Christian is Jan's brother's middle name, and, you know, he got his name to say Gay from, you know, his pappy. Okay, but anyway, that's how they made the name. Now, she describes the birth as very dramatic because she was going through a very tough time. Number one, because Marvin Gaye's ignorant ass family. Okay, yes, I know they from D.C. My city is always behind me. You will always see the capital behind me, but that was some ignorant bullshit. For them to put pressure on that girl, to tell that girl to have that baby on the same day is Big Frankie. Okay, so... We're going to name the baby after Frankie, and then we want you to have a baby on the same day as Frankie. And I know, you know, some people be like, oh, I wish you could have a baby, but that's pressure. Girl, that is too much pressure for you to be putting on a girl who is already stressed out because she don't think that Marvy Poo want her coochie no more. At any rate, his ignorant ass family was telling her, I need you to have a baby on the 14th. Okay, they in the hospital and everything telling her to push, but the baby is not coming. They told her to have the baby on the 14th, and the baby didn't come on the 16th. 
until the 16th. And then when the baby got dead, it was a breech birth. So during delivery, the uh, baby arm got broken. Child, she blamed herself for that too. So she and her feelings, because she couldn't have a baby on the 14th, the way that the gay family wanted her to, to have a baby. And then when she had the baby, she broke the baby arm in her mind because she didn't break the baby arm, the baby was just born breech, okay? That means, I think it means when the baby is the other way, like the baby come out feet first. No, you're like, nay, you ain't got no makeup on or nothing. Hold tight, I got y'all, okay, I got y'all. I, I know I'm dressed regular, but y'all know I've been coping with a migraine all goddamn weekend, okay? I don't feel like dressing up and putting all that shit on. Shit, all the while, Augie Doggy Anna, okay, the lawyers, is at the is at the door. Knock, knock, knock. Um, here's some more paperwork. Marvy Pooh. Marvy Pooh is not happy. You know, he going back and forth with the courts, talking about uh, child support, spousal support. You ain't meant to take care of these houses. Just all kinds of documents, right? And then Marvin, mind, he looking at it as, oh, she trying to take all my money. That's a don't, don't, Anna, Gordy got money already? Because ain't her brother like uh, Barry Gordy? Because Marby Pooh wasn't cooperating. Augie Doggy Anna, and I'm calling her ass Augie Doggy because that's some foul shit to do, okay? You going through a divorce, how you get the man back is to not let him see his son. So Jan is back in Hidden Hills, dealing with her postpartum depression, okay? But she's dealing with it better because she know what it is this time. Okay. Is now, while Jan is, you know, there dealing with her postpartum, she's also dealing with the fact that I want to have glitz and glamour and lights around me too, the same way that Frankie does. Frankie and Jan both have aspirations of celebrity stardom, you know. I didn't know she could sing. I didn't know she could dance. I didn't know she could do anything. Now, what I do know is that Frankie could sing. Jan said that all her aspirations was put on hold because her job is to take care of Marvy Pooh. Yeah, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. You put all your shit on hold to chase down around behind him. And then you get old, you know, and then you look down and you know, that thing hanging seven foot long. Frankie, the brother, was flattered that Marvin Gaye gave little Frankie his name, okay? But Frankie, the brother, is still confused because he's like, wait a minute, hold on, I'm his brother. I've been with him his whole life. He knows my aspirations to become a singer also. Okay, Jan, you're looking at him going, yes, yes, yes. Frankie says, well, why is he put in Frankie Beverly before me? Frankie Beverly has already gotten a deal with Capitol Records through your brother. He could have did that for me because Frankie, brother, you cannot do what Frankie Beverly can do. You got me? You know, he's an Aries. Don't forget them bitches selfish as hell. He got to take care of his own loins first, brother. Jan so tells Frankie he adores you and he loves you. He speaks of you very highly. Frankie says he wants to control me. He wants to control everybody. You know, he likes everybody to be under his thumb financially or mentally so that he can control them. Then that way, when he has control, he is unbothered. Jan says lovingly to Frankie, you know he loves you, brother. It's just... Marvy Pooh just hurts the people that are closest to him. Child, y'all better hit that nigga in the head. Throw his ass down some steps. YouTube, these is just jokes. I'm not telling, no, these is jokes, brother. These is just jokes, sister, whoever the reviewer is. I don't have time for that bullshit. I'm just telling you jokes. Now, right now, Jan is in a happy place, okay, because Marvy Pooh is feeling... I don't know, romantic again. He's giving her all the things that she's missed. You know, they longing for each other. Well, she was longing for him. He wasn't longing for shit because he was, you know, hunching other people, you know. She could hunch other people too, but it just had to be with his permission, you know. But eh, I digress. Behind door number one is Frankie Beverly, okay? Marby Boo goes, uh, your boyfriend coming to town. Jan says, that's not my boyfriend. Oh, yes, he is your boyfriend. Jan says, ugh, why are you doing this, Marvin? Okay, okay, Jan, I'll pull back, okay? Just be cool, just be nice, and go pick him up from the airport. Why me, Marvin? Why me? 
Because it got to be you, Jan. Jan says, I'll do it, but just back off. Okay. I'm going to go play ball. See you later. Now, for the rest of the week until, you know, Frankie D. Beverly got dead. Okay. She said, that Marby Poo was very, let's say, uh, shunning towards her. He went out his way to alienate her, to make her feel like he don't like her and he don't want her no more. Now, she in her feelings, because remember, she did them with postpartum, so she taking that shit for serious. She still don't understand what the hell Marby Poo is doing. This is trickery, girl. You don't recognize trickery when you see it? She said that the rejection stung, girl. Jan is on her way to the airport. She tingling. <laughs> Jan is at the airport. You know, she sees Frankie Beverly from afar. He looks like Adonis. He gets in the car and they look at each other. Their eyes lock and it's lust at first sight. Oh, yes. Jan, I could just swallow you whole. Oh, yes, Frankie Beverly. Oh, you look good. You look like a lick'em stick. Oh, I love me some. No, I love <laughs> me some Frankie Beverly. I do. So finally, she understands. And Jan is finally understanding, okay, I get it now. You know, normally he just put the ding dong in front of me, but I guess he wants this to unwind naturally. Because, you know, Jan will, or Marby Poo will be like, hey, I want you to get with those two guys, you know, make it happen all before the age of 18, okay? But this time... You know, Marby Poo wants to be the coordinator of this hookup. He's trying to force them to act on what is already being done. Because it's obvious that they are both attracted to each other. It was just Marby Gay gets some kind of satisfaction out of arranging it. So they in the car, small talk. Frankie Beverly says, well, you know we're going to be opening for uh, Marvin Gay on tour. Jan is like, uh... You didn't tell me that. Well, yes. Why, yes, Jen. That is what's going to be going on. Uh-huh. Because Marvin Gaye needs Frankie Beverly to work with him closely so that he can tell him how and when to hunch on his wife. They smoke a joint. They both there sitting there like, ooh, I wonder when this is going to happen. Because, old nigga, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. You got Marvin versus Motown. Motown saw right through Marvin bullshit. When he was making that album in there, you know, the one where he was like, Jan, I made these songs for you. And Jan was like, how the fuck you make these songs for me when you didn't even write these songs? In fact, these songs is old as shit. And you just reworked them. Motown saw it too. Motown was like, what you think? We gonna pay you to, to rework old songs that we wrote for your ass years ago? No, nigga. Marvin no. said, this, this is art, Motown. This is art. This is how it's work. Motown said, shut the fuck up talking to me. Get back in that goddamn studio and do something else. In fact, here, 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 here. Donna Ross' brother been working on something. Take this. Just take it. Take it. Jan, you know, she want to talk to her pappy, you know. Well, not a real pappy because Slim is her real pappy. But Earl is the one, the stepfather who raised her, you know, the drug dealer to the celebrities, okay? That's another reason why she was privy to a lifestyle full of, you know, stars and stars' children and stuff like that, right? So she says, he don't like me no more. Earl said, he like you, girl. You just his baby mama, you know? After you become the baby mama, things are different. You'll work it out. Earl says, the main thing is, is he still taking care of you? Yes, he's still taking care of me. Well, then shut the fuck up talking to me then, girl. The only thing is, if he's taking care of you and the kids, shut the hell up. Everything else should be simple. Ain't he taking care of your pappy Slim, too? I heard he got your father around there sweeping up hair and shit like he at the barbershop. Is that true? Jan says, yes, it is true. But every time he get mad at me, he threatened to fire my father. The truth of the matter was this. Okay, how Jan put it was that, yes, there are times where Marby Poo enjoyed Slim's bebop stores. Okay, he enjoyed being around the character, but when he wasn't in a good mood, the bebop stories would get on his nerves. Then he'd turn around and yell in Jan face, J I'm about to fire your father, he ain't shit. New yeah. songs that Motown gave to him that were written by Donna Ross's brother T-Boy was, oh, remember my song I told you? I want you to want me. 
the right way, baby. So because Marvin back into this music making, you know, vibe again, he wants Jan and the kids to stay with him in the studio. That is abusive to me. For somebody to be like, okay, I like you today, but I don't like you no more. You know, okay, I was liking you last week, but I don't like you this week. That, uh, 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 that's abuse. Jan's happy because she feels like he's back in love. Maybe because he know he got him a good album, okay, that's coming out. Marvin used the love that he had for Jan to connect with the songs that were given to him by Motown. Dance with me, come on, dance, pretty baby. Dance with me, come on, dance. We had After the Dance, all the way around, and soon I'll be loving your guy again. Now, this is a trick, okay, because them niggas will pull a trick on you, okay? Because what happened was, Mobby Pooh said in the song, I'm ready for you to be my wife. Jan was like, is that a form of proposal? Uh, well, it will be eventually. See, those are the games. He said the divorce is coming soon, and I want to marry you soon. Did they ever get married? I don't even think they ever got married, but eh, let's move on. She goes on to talk about some of his friends. She talked about Muhammad Ali, Sammy Davis Jr., um, Richard Pryor, Ray Charles, Ike Turner, Red Fox, Natalie Cole, Bill and Camille, Mick Jagger, and Jesse Jackson. Now, I'm saying to myself, hold on, Jesse Jackson. What the hell? Every last one of these names is users. Okay, and, and you know, doers and swingers and good timers, if you know what I'm saying. Jesse Jackson, what the fuck was you doing with that? I need you to be preaching in the church. Not hanging your ass around with Marvin D. Gay, girl, and Jan, girl. I mean, sir, I need some more investigations on that. So, anyway, Mick Jagger invited Jan and Marvin Gay to Studio 54. Y'all know Studio 54. Oh my God. If I was alive then, child, was I alive? Yeah, I probably was just seven, though. But anyway, that night that they went, Sylvester was dead. Y'all know Sylvester. Ooh. Ooh. Marvin Gay loves Sylvester. Not like, you know, ooh, I want to, ooh, yes, feel all over your body type thing. It was, no, he loves Sylvester's freedom, right? And that's how Jan presented it to me. He didn't, she didn't say that, you know, Marvie Pooh wanted to take Sylvester in the back room and give him, you know, the pickle. It was more so of, I adore you. Plus, on top of the fact that they both had Henry uh, Fuqua in common. Remember Henry Fuqua, or was it Harvey Fuqua? Harvey Fuqua was the dude that signed uh, Marvy Pooh to a contract for life. And I told you, I said, I don't even know how that contract looked, but Barry Gordy got him out of that contract or bought Marvy Pooh out of that for life contract with Harvey Fuqua. I don't even know why they friends. Why would they even be friends? Nigga, you tried to sign me for life? Oh, this is hilarious. This is hilarious. One night when they was out, right? You got Candace Bergman. You know, that's some um, rich white actress lady. But Can is that Murphy? Is that Murphy? Hold on, y'all. So anyway, they was out. Candace Bergman was checking out Marvy Poo. Ryan O'Neill with his fine ass self, fine fat ass self, was looking at uh, Jan. I see you over there checking out Candace Bergman. You want some of that? Jan said, no. Why you looking at Ryan O'Neill? Because he looking at you, okay? Ryan O'Neill is looking at you. He's admiring your beauty, Jan. Matter of fact, he coming over here right now. Now, let me tell you what messed me up in the head. But what she said was he came over, you know, greeted her, hey, Jan, you're beautiful, eh, 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 you know, and then came, got behind her, rubbed her shoulder, and put his pickle right there. I'm like, did he pull his pants down? Like, I don't know, girl. I don't know. I ain't never had that shit happen to me before. What man just come up and put his pickle on my neck while I'm having dinner. Now, here we are, 1975, 1976. Ooh, Marvin is still working on that album, child. And they are talking about the legendary parties. Okay, now let me tell you something. I am a party child, too. You know how back in the day our parents used to have parties down in the basement and then they would send us 
upstairs and they would be like, don't bring your ass downstairs for nothing because they would be downstairs, you know, having, you know, parties with, listen, I don't know. I can't say. I wasn't never there, but I could always hear the music, okay? And she was talking about how she would always have the best parties or they would always have the best parties with the best stars. They were talking about their legendary parties with Don D. Cornelius, uh, Richard Pryor, Muhammad Ali, Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder. Wonder and that beautiful ass Jane the Kennedy. She gonna want to talk about how Jane Fonda wanted some of her husband. Answer, no. Okay, because Jane Fonda invited MG to the studio. You know, remember when she was doing her aerobics? You know, when she found out that Marvy Pooh had took Jan to the studio, she wasn't happy. And I'm saying to myself, well, if he's taking Jan, that's because. You know, he won a threesome. I never look at it as he bringing Jan to cock block. It's always a fact of, okay, Jan is coming because just in case we're going to do it, let's just bring Jan in on it too. A young lady by the name of Diane Cannon came along. Marvie Pooh didn't tell her, Mina Jan, about Diane Cannon. Okay. Who's Diane Cannon? Anyway, Jan found out on a humble that they was out together. Jan said, why you ain't tell me about you and the bitch? Mommy Pooh was like, why I got to tell you? We ain't nothing but friends. As this is going on, Mommy Pooh back on the Frankie Beverly bullshit. Your boyfriend coming back in town. Mm -hmm. And I've made arrangements for y'all two to stay in the old, uh, you know, Cooter's Crib Motel down there off of Route 66 down there over there, bound around the wrong turn right there. Okay, so I got you two, two separate rooms. Jan was like, what kind of bullshit you pulling? Jan, you know what kind of bullshit he pulling. Stop it, girl. Stop it. But anyway, um, Marby Pooh says, I got some work to do around the house and y'all gonna get in my way and get on my nerves. So why don't y'all just skedaddle on over there to Cooter's crib, you know, and, you know, give me my peace. Jan mm -hmm. said, okay, nigga. So when they got to the motel, to the Cooter's crib, okay, they found out that the two separate rooms was adjoining rooms. Mm -hmm. Jan is saying to herself, why would the man that say he loves me so much want to cause discord in our family? Girl, that's not discord. Ain't y'all done this before? Y'all done this before. This is just the first time you are doing it without him. Well, without him actually participating because the motherfucker organized everything. One Ch hour later after Frankie Beverly and Jan Gay checks in the Cooter's crib, they in adjoining rooms, okay? There's a knock at the adjoining room door. All right, love bugs. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.